Well, hello there. I am Kathy Crow. This is the Crow Cottage, and it seems like I have been gone a very long time. So thank you for watching with me. Thanks for sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. And um, stamping along with me today, I am going to do something from Tulip Fields. This is, um, I didn't think I was going to like this set that much. I actually this is one of the first things that I started playing with with our new catalog and mainly because I knew I could just do it really quick, get a couple of cards done, put it down and go on to the ones that I want to do because I really like that garden set. I'm a gardener and um, that's more my style. So I I just can't put well, this one here. down. Well, I keep thinking I'm going to be done with it, I but I, I'm i not. It, it, sorry about the sound there. I'm trying to get my video yeah, on I'm here not. because <laughs> I can't see comments if I don't do that. So sorry you had to hear me blabbing in the background because it's obviously it's delayed a little bit. But anyhow, so we are having celebration right now. If you do not know about celebration, please check with me. There's a lot of good things you can buy um, that are new, very cute things. I've been, uh, I didn't expect to spend as much this time around as I have. Can you believe that there's always so many cute things in here? But there have been, <laughs> I mean, like animals and lots of really nice flowers and everything. So, oh man, and this... I told myself I wasn't going to buy any more palm trees, but I did. All right, so we will get to those things in the future. But for now, um, we're going to go ahead and just put the camera down here and get started on some things. So it is celebration, which means for every $50 worth of items, you get to, you, if you buy $50 or more, you get to buy, all, you know, you get for free um, any of these things. Like this is a really cute set. There's just so many things. So if you are needing a brochure, make sure you let me know. I am happy to send those things to my customers. You just have to spend um, $50 with me uh, like every couple of months, basically $100 um, a, a year. Um, we'll get you a couple of catalogs and if you want a catalog every single time. Hi, Kathy Crow. It's nice to see you. Um, how are you doing weather-wise? Our weather is snowy today, but it's just flurries and I can still see this, the sidewalk a little bit out front and all the grass blades are still sticking up. We've barely got any snow, which I'm grateful for because I definitely did not want a lot of snow. Jeff has a snow day today and so he is home, uh, but I told him I am doing this anyway. I expected you to be gone. <laughs> That's why I am normally not here on a Thursday. I normally do this on Monday, but he was home on Monday because his vacation hadn't really quite ended yet. And um, so I just didn't want to do it with him home, but sheesh, you know. So there you go. So he is downstairs somewhere doing who knows what. But so we have our new catalog out and um, and you just have to see it to believe it. It's really got nice things in it. So if you are interested in buying anything, here's a host code and I will send you um, some free uh, embellishments or, you know, something. We'll see. Now, the, today's card is a card that I saw made by, um, with different things on it. I don't remember even what stamps that she was using, but um, this idea is not old, so many, many people have done, done it. I mean, it's not new. It is old, <laughs> so many, many people have done it, but it's not the... Um, it's not, it's not the joy fold. It's sort of like the backwards joy fold. And it is, uh, but it's just really cute. I knew it would go good with this, and, and it does. So this paper is our Tulip Fields paper that goes with this stamp set. This has a, a Tulip set that goes with it in the big suite of products. and uh, But I am not using that Tulip one today. I'm just going to use this one. And then I'm going to use this Daffodil Daydream just for this little scroll that's here. And I might not even do that on this card. And, and the splatter. There's a little splatter on that one. And then I'm using this Flowering Rain Boots. I use the sentiment in this one for today's project. But I love this one. Now this is one of those that I thought I was going to get into right away. And, oh, thanks, Kathy. It's nice to hear from you. So do, are you guys getting snow? 
um, up there. Uh, we've got wind today, so t we had nice warm weather, and then it turned bitter cold, and it was 16 when I looked at about 10 o'clock this morning, and going to get really cold maybe till 11 tonight, um, but then it's supposed to warm up again. So whatever snow we get is going to melt and go away, and it's not turned into much, thankfully. We haven't had um, really a winter here yet, and I'm not sad about that. I'm actually quite glad. This set has this cute little pot and these tulips, and I think that might go really well. I don't know, there's just some th new, I, I wanna do it a little different. We're gonna do this card, but just do it a little bit different. Instead of the pale papaya, I'm gonna use um, so, so saffron for our background. Now, if I did not put my link on, I meant to do that and forgot, but right at the end of my video, I will go ahead in my comments and put the link on. I am already did a tutorial for this one. Um, I'm having a, my Facebook um, live on Thursdays. Oh my goodness, minus 15. Oh sheesh, with a windshield. Ugh. Yeah, I thought, I was afraid it was gonna be cold. I have a brother actually, Kathy, that lives in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, which is not very far from uh, Chicago. I'm not sure you know, really what part of Illinois you live in, but um, they always get a lot of cold. So anyhow, our, so I have the measurements on my, um, did I put it on my website? I actually might have. I might have put this card on my website already, and if you clicked the picture, that link might take you to this tutorial. So that might already be there if you want to find out what the dimensions are. So here they are, five and a half inches by nine and three quarters. So it takes a whole sheet. Normally, you know, we just do half of a sheet of, of this and it's eight and a half um, across, but we're gonna go ahead and use it this length so we can get the nine and three quarters. So we'll go five and a half here on this direction. And then I will open this up and we'll get nine and three quarters of an inch this way. Okay. And then we're gonna score it. So I have my score blade out because it always pops out. So in order to prevent that, I just keep it in a little disc and we're gonna go one and a quarter inches. Okay, so we're gonna score it one and a scoring it the long side this is the long side this is the short side so when you see it, to, written tutorial instructions that's what the long side i mean i know it makes sense but i'm explaining it because it took me like forever to really figure out what people were saying when they said the long side it's like uh so and then four and one quarter here now this is going to be your little pocket for the gift card because this is actually a little gift card okay so that is that and then that is all the scoring you need to do pretty pretty easy one to do now we're gonna do um, we're gonna I'm gonna put a um, I'm gonna put a little half circle on that but I need to get my BSP on it first okay so we'll fold the little pocket over, and then let's go ahead while we're, we're, we're right here, and we're gonna put in the DSP. Now, instead of doing, for this one I did red underneath, and this is early espresso, um, but uh, I, um, I, didn't want, I didn't want another red, and I also didn't want early espresso. I'm gonna use Sahara Sand this time for the overlay on that uh, windmill and the fan part. And um, we're gonna try, try Highland Heather. So I definitely want my Highland Heather tulips to be on this part of the insert that I do, and which is fine because the top of my paper here is working out perfectly for me to get two layers. That's the only thing I have to say when you wanna coordinate your colors. Because there are so many colors, just pick one um, to go with your, um, your main color and then just make sure that you get at least at least two rows or one really big row of that color and then it will work out really well so this dsp is just five and a quarter by five and a quarter so because i want to make sure i get that and that in it i am actually going to measure here like this 
the five and a quarter and see where that gets me. It actually gets me right there. So that will be just fine. So five and a quarter, and then we'll turn it and we'll go five and a quarter again. And then that's going to give me almost exactly this edge piece that I want for this. But I actually want it to be a little bit longer. I don't want it to be that short. I don't mind this side being that short, but I actually want this side to just be a little longer. I've got this one measured at five and three eighths. And uh, so if you don't want to waste this piece and use it some other way later, um, go ahead and just hang on to it and use it. But I think I have a scrap. I've been cutting all of this tulip field. This is from the designer series paper tulip fields. Let's look at this really quick. I love this polka dot side. This is a poppy parade. No, no, it's not. It's real red because this color is real red. Um, when I saw this, I thought, how am I ever going to use that? And if you look at my Pinterest stuff, you'll see how I did it. Because there's actually a cute little card that I figured out. Um, went with that kind of a weird sky really nicely. But the tulips are really pretty. I could not color those any nicer, you know, than what they have. And the back sides are really nice, too. So you will love this paper. It's actually really pretty all this all the sheets are there's not one that I liked you know more or less than another the green on this is really nice and then this sky piece I've used this quite a bit um, this I love this because it's got a, like a pool party background and pool parties just really easy to go with almost all of our colors don't you think pool party it goes with all the greens but it also blends pretty nicely with the blues. So there's a sky. If you don't want a sponge, you can start with those skies and, and you'll be all set. We're gonna do one inch here. And, and then I believe I want five and three eighths. So let's, let's hmm, I've only got that. Eh, I actually wanted more than that, but that's all right. We're gonna just have to live with it. So. Let's cut this end off. Five and three eighths. And then we want one inch here. Let me make sure my side is straight because one side looked like it wasn't perfectly straight. One inch. That looks pretty straight. Okay, so let's see if that's Correct, yeah, that's the length that I want. So that will do for that. And I think we are, no, we're not quite done with that. We're almost done. We're gonna wanna do um, some embossing, but let, let's just go ahead and glue this part down first and get done, get done with that. This morning, because there was no snow, oh, there goes our male lady or guy. I guess that's actually a male guy today. Usually it's a male lady. I wonder where our male lady is. That was a male guy. Driving by our mailbox is nicely right by the street, so they don't even have to get out of their truck. They just drive right along and deliver and pick up. It's pretty, pretty good if you could be sure that was the route you were getting. Being a mail delivery person in our neighborhood would be sweet. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on because what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to clip a little semicircle piece with a punch. Now I, I did it with a little, little punch. I wanna use a circle punch. That didn't turn out quite as nice. And I also realized kinda need to get this DSP on there before you actually do the punch part. So I'm gonna do it correctly this time. But anyway, it looks like everything's going along pretty well out there. If it wasn't for the wind, I don't know if they would have had no school. Jeff thought maybe it was that wind factor, Kathy, like what you guys have got up there um, that might have caused them to decide to just go ahead and give the kids a day off from school and the teachers. So Jeff substitute teaching, but that means he gets off today too. All right, now we're gonna do a 
a circle punch. What have I got here? Oh, this one will do. This one is a one and a half inch, but really almost any anyone would do. You're just gonna wanna get that in there wherever you want. You can just eyeball it. And now you've got a nice little place to be able to see your gift card a little more easily. And then let me go grab a couple of clips because I need to do the sides of that pocket and I need a couple of paper clips to get that closed properly. So we'll just put some glue right here and right there. Now while I am doing some other things, I'm going to sponge a background sky because most of my uh, cards that I've done with this windmill set have been with a sponged sky. It's pretty hard to do to written tutori tutorials showing how to do a sponged anything. Um, it's, it's a pretty easy thing to do, and it seems simple enough, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It, 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 so I don't mind showing you how I do it. If it doesn't turn out, then okay. You saw that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but usually it's pretty forgiving and you can make it work. And, and I one of the things I wanted to do when I started doing these um, video tutorials is to show people that you do not have to do things perfectly for them to turn out well. Okay, now I do need to save one piece of my So Saffron. I need to save a piece. We can use this one for my scalloped, contoured, scalloped die that I want a piece for. And then I'll just use this piece. I think I've got a couple of extra ones here. For the gingham embossing folder. We're going to get that out. Okay, we're going to use this. This is a new embossing folder that's in the in the the catalog right now. I love it. So we're going to emboss one of these with that and then we're going to sponge that and then we're going to cut using the second to the largest die here. We're going to cut that. But I'm going to set it aside for a minute because I want to show you how to do sponging. Um, it depends on what kind of a sky you know you want and um, this one's already got some blue on it. If I wanted to start with blue I would do that but I don't. I don't you can you, like our red one showed you you can actually start with you can do any color you want. Um, I'm gonna start this is a retired pineapple punch. Uh, you could start with your mango melody, that would work too, but I'm gonna start with the lightest yellow because um, I do a lot of skies that are sunsets and sunrises that are kind of dark, but in that, that I would start with my blue, but I'm gonna do a yellow. We're gonna start with yellow and you just get a pretty good amount on your brush start off of the card and then just go on it and it can be um you know you know, you can cover a lot of it because when you're starting with yellow it is gonna go real slow and that's actually not a bad thing um that way you can make it i can put blue in it i can put purple in it i can put pink in it Starting out with yellow just makes it really easy to do. It's the only thing you have to be careful is you, unless you've got green coming into play in your ground, you you don't want to turn it green. That'd be <laughs> a green sky here means you're gonna have a tornado. Uh, so you do not necessarily want that kind of a unless you really wanted a scary sky. You probably don't want to evoke a tornado. All right, now that is a very, very light yellow, but because it is, it just means I can do so much more. Now I can get my Mango Melody in here. I'm gonna just use that same brush because that's not gonna impact my ink pad too much. And we're gonna try to get a little darker bottom. Go in there just a little bit. 
Okay, we don't need a lot. And it is gonna be darker at the edges where you come in. That's why you start on the off side. But um, I will trim it. You know, it doesn't really matter how big a piece I start with. This is the, this is about the largest size. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half. It's, I'm not gonna end up with any image that's gonna fill that whole page. Now, so you just ask yourself, what do I, what colors do I want? You know, am I going to put purple in with this, whatever it is? If so, then you're going to want to use um, maybe your, your sponge that already has some purple coloring on it. And you can use um, however dark or light a purple that you have. Um, I'm, I, here's my Highland Heather, which is what that card stock is, so I definitely want to use that. This is a lighter. Fresh Freesia is very pink. It's not all that purpley. I already dipped my thumb in it. So let's be careful here and think about where I want my color. I definitely want it on the bottom. So we're going to go on the bottom here. You can see it's pretty light which is good. If I if it if it goes on too heavy, I just can't control it. So, better to have something controllable. Now this, I don't mind getting some swirls. I'm going to start doing this and getting some swirls that's going to kind of show some cloud movement and it can go up into that sky. Some of it can be dark. You can even get a pretty good dark swirl at this point. It's okay. All right. That is as good as I'm going to get on that one. So let's do just a little bit of Highland Heather. Now, I'm not going to probably end up using this card for now. Um, I just am kind of showing you how I did my sponging on some of the other cards that I am gonna have coming out into my newsletter and uh it would just wasn't able to do a tutorial for it because again I can't I can't <laughs> it's like with uh making bread or a pie crust you can't you can measure the liquid to flour ingredients but it depends on your humidity of the day it depends on so many things to you know how how much you actually do you have to work it and look at it and decide as you go so i'm gonna put i want a little bit let more purple here so we're gonna put quite a bit more there because i'm gonna end up with either water in this scene or grass one or the other either one will cover up my purple so I don't have to worry about it being too dark down here and then I will trim it to get however much of this sky in it that I want one of the reasons I kind of like using the lighter yellow or very light blue at the top is that um, for this kind of a card where you sponge the background I don't like to put a tag with the sentiment so much I prefer to just stamp right on it with the whatever word sentiment you know I'm doing so with darker colors you'd have to emboss white onto it to show your words all right so that is a very basic sky um, you know sponged sky and we're done. I'm gonna just set these aside, but remember, always wash these off really good. They do wash really clean, clean and nice. All right, so that was just to show you how to do that. We are not using it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put it aside. Jeff and I, since he was home today, we normally wait and do our Dear Abby together in the evening, but he already read Dear Abby to <laughs> today to me. And I don't need a very big piece, let's see. I'm not sure if I wrote down, I did not. It's on my tutorial, but I didn't write it down. This little flap right here, I just need to measure this to see what that is. It is five inches by 
Hmm. Looks like two and three quarters. So five by two and three quarters. Let's go ahead and cut it right now. Okay, let's see if we've got the two and three quarters. Oh good, it's pretty close. So we'll go five by two and three quarters. And then we're gonna emboss that piece with our gingham folder. So dear Abby today, when Jeff and I did it, it was, they. do you like to read Dear Abby? We like to read it because I think, you know, for those of us who have pretty ordinary dull lives, it's pretty entertaining what they come up with to ask poor old dear Abby. All right, let's put the camera up. You're not right on top of this. And we'll get our, we'll need to get our um, windmill dies going as well. All right, so I'm using my magnetic base just right there and then this blue one right on top. And that's the right pressure for this gingham powder. And then I'm going to put this away because that's just used for the, the blue one is just used for the um, embossing folders. Isn't that nice? Now we're going to sponge the top of that. Um, you can ink up your folder. You would just ink up this front part of your folder if you wanted to ink it up. But I'm going to sponge on top of it. That's the kind of... Um, look I want is I want to be sponged. And let's cut out our die. This is the second one we use. It won't fit, so we we'll use this one. Let me grab up my scratched one. So dear Abby's first one, the guy was a asked this was a good one. Um, he asked Abby, he said he, he and his wife have been married for 40 years. Did you read Dear Abby today? 40 years, his best friend had just confessed that 35 years ago, he and his wife of five years at that time had an affair. And the, uh, the friend, for whatever reason, had to confess to him, which doesn't seem very nice at all. And thankfully, Dear Abby pointed that out, you know. Trying to make yourself feel better at the expense of someone else is not a very nice thing to do. All right, now um, I'm going to do a white piece underneath there. It's going to be this one. So you can do it with the scallop die that comes with it. It's a little smaller than the white one I was going to use, but while I've got the knife here, I might as well just cut it out. And then I won't have to measure and cut later. I'll just use that. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that piece ready to go. And it, it, it just does look, it looks a little nicer, doesn't it? Instead of just that straight edge. And so now we are done with our scalloped contours. I love these. It has this scallop piece, which you can use on your envelopes. If you like to decorate your envelopes up. So um, yeah, he wanted to know if um, he should tell his wife if the friend had tattled, you know, or not. So thankfully, dear Abby told him, unless it's your marriage on the line and you really feel like you have to because you can't let it go, just don't say anything. So that was nice. Usually she's telling people to always come clean with every everything, you know. So I was kind of surprised. All right, so for the windmill, the fan and, hey, let me put away some things. I mean, what do you tell your, do you tell, do you, do you, sometimes things aren't very nice that happen in people's pasts, so don't dredge it up. There's some fence posts here, very cute, but a little, hmm time consuming. Now these tulips are really cute. I might cut those out while I'm right here 
because I think they might be a really nice little layer. The clouds are nice. Grace comes with all these dies. I already have some early espresso ones cut and ready to go. We're going to use this one for the purple, the Highland Heather, and the bike's going to, I'll use the Highland Heather for that too. But for this um, Sahara Slate, I'm going to just use these two pieces right here. Now let's put you this way. Keeping your dies as far apart as possible is not a bad plan. Just so that there's a lot of really good contact with your press and it presses it down really easy. Now that one has a whole lot of little holes. So I'm running it through two times. Uh, one time probably would have been enough, but just to be sure. All right, now let's see if I can do this without making a big mess. <laughs> that's there but where did the little fan oh there it is it fell down it's so funny it just falls right out and then it's like well I don't know where you went to I know you're here somewhere what I try to avoid is all these little dots on the board that, you know just get everywhere they, they're staticky so they they stick to you and you end up having little dots all over the place and if you if you don't notice it Especially when your plate is scratched up like this one is, it gets on the other side and then um, it can leave impressions on your next pass-through items. And you don't really want to do that. Okay. Get that all cleaned out. So this is Sahara Sand. We'll see how this looks with the Highland Heather. I'm hoping it looks good. We'll find out. Ah, all right. So Dear Abby thankfully told him not to worry about it. So that was good. It, to, we keep track of how many Dear Abby advices we agree with and how many we disagree. Usually we have like a 90% 90, 90 disapproval <laughs> rating just because... I don't know, maybe it's because the people write in with so many bad, bad problems. All right, so we'll put that aside. Let me put this aside. And we're going to cut out this and this with Highland Heather. I'm not going to be using these stamps at all. Um, actually, I will. I will use it because I need to show you about this too. And I'll use my sky to show you what I wanted to demonstrate. Oop, that one goes down there, that one there. Let me put this one here. And we're gonna do those tulips too. So there's the bike. And we're gonna do these little tulips. Those are cute. I don't know, I haven't cut the tulips out yet. So let's see how easy they are to get out. They're very small, and I'm hoping that they go in one long string because um, I'm not, I don't do a whole bunch of little things too much. I just try to avoid that. Too, too difficult to glue when you have like a bunch of just tiny, tiny little things. All right, I'll get the die or the tulip in here. Oh, good, it did. It came out in one, one shot. Get the bike going there. <clears throat> Look at that. How cute is that? And easy. Super easy. Look at you, little tulips. They're cute. Now, they are all one masked color, so I think I would want to use my little pen and to maybe put a little bit of distinction in there, but you really wouldn't even have to. It's pretty, pretty sweet. 
All right, so that is that. that. I think we're all done with that for now. Although if I am doing any more of my two, my if I'm doing another card, I might have to drag it out again. Here's the little bike. Let's turn you over. Oh, so cute. I really like bicycles because I'm a bike rider. So anything with a bike, I usually go for. All right. That is that. And. All right. And then there was another one, um, Dear Abby, that was a lady who was her neighbor sadly had passed away from COVID and that wasn't the issue. Uh, she was concerned that after the neighbor's husband had passed away, um, they had put some belongings uh, out on the side of the, you know, like, I don't know, I think maybe like a chair or some stuff like that. Anyway, some items for free. And she wanted to know, you know, how they passed away from COVID. Are you passing germs along? So anyway, Abby reassured her that germs don't last very long on how things left outside. All right, we're going to we're gonna put this here, and I do wish I had made it a little longer. That was a little bit short, you know, but we're gonna live with it. I wanna take my sponge and just make this pop out a little bit. And so I have a friend who gave me a really cool smoosh thing. Freddie, I don't know if you're watching me right now, but I used my smoosh on it, and it worked brilliantly it was like shush 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 and it was done now this has a little bit more of a rounded edge I'm gonna get out this bumblebee um, and we're gonna go real light because I really just want the top I don't want anything going down into the grooves at all and so that schmoosh worked perfect because it wasn't rounded at all and I actually do have another tool too that works really well, that's nice and flat. You, you really need something nice and flat to do this. Now, this does not work as well, just because it tends to go down. I just want those ridges just to stand up a little bit, and they are, so that's good. It's just that it is coloring a little bit of the other stuff too. And um, Like here, you can see how it, you know, coloring that a bit. So it's just a little harder to, to do this with the, with the brush, but you can do it. It's, it's doable. It just doesn't do it as good. <laughs> just not as good. Now you can just take um, a flat felt you know, piece two and sort of get the same effect. But it, if you're using your finger, it's gonna not be flat. It has to be flat. All right, so this is gonna go on here like this. Oh, so cute. Anyway, so yes, you don't have to worry about stuff being left out on the, although who, you know, I do remember, I think, I don't know if Jeff and I have ever grabbed stuff off the side of the road, but you can, you can find things. And if you're young and your family is, you know, trying to save pennies because you're raising children, it can be very useful to just pick up things that are free. But yeah, maybe it was Jeremy, who knows? Um, we there. I heard there was some. I I went online and found some really good pet stories. Oh, you're gonna love these. There's some. There have been. There was. I it start. Uh, I started by looking to see what I could find. I'm gonna glue this right on top here. Okay. Um. I I wanted to see. Uh. After I f heard about the pet, there was a. Oh, a dog. Um. In New Hampshire, that. The, it, or was it Vermont? I guess it was Vermont and New Hampshire. It was probably like right on the border. And um, this guy was in a car accident. And I, I don't know if it was with all, it must have been with all that snow and all that they were having so much trouble with recently. And uh, anyway, 
a dog went and found help, you know, and wouldn't stop. Kept barking and barking until they finally followed him. It was like a lassie story, and they took him right to the car, and and um, they found that guy fi fine, but he'd been injured in the accident, so it was really imperative that he be found and quickly. And they did because the dog rescued him. Okay, we're going to shove that on there. that on there really good. Very cute. Love that. And then we'll need a brad. Now I have been collecting brads for ages. So I have a whole bunch of different ones. So I've got a purple one in here. You could use any color you want. There's metal ones probably in Stampin' Up! It's a catalog. Um, metallic. But I know I got purple. We'll find a purple that matches something lighter, not darker. Okay. So have you heard of any other dog stories? So I went online and I found some other dog stories. What? There was a, um, actually, there was in Colorado, um, there was a story about, this is like a story that happened a year or two ago, I think. There was a dog that got rescued by skiers. So you don't usually have stories where the dog is the rescuer. But in this case, in just outside of Denver, there were cross-country skiers that came across a dog and they rescued him. That was kind of nice. That humans can get in on the act too. So you just put a little hole punch there where the circle is to show you where to do it. And you can put in your brad. Now, if you want to make sure your brad isn't too tight, um, if it's too tight, then it's not going to, it's not going to shut. You know, if it's flat against the paper, it won't allow any spinning action. So, um, I'm actually going to put, I'm going to slide my little tweezer underneath here. Like this, and then push down on it, just so that it's not quite so flat. You can also take, um like some scissors and you can just put those there and then push down too and then it kind of flattens it out but it doesn't push it right against the paper and then that way it still spins really easy so cute all right very good and then there was um, a border collie oh Freddie you're gonna like this one uh, I think Freddie's a border collie lover isn't this cute this is going to be good. Now, what sentiment do I want to put on here? I'm going to look and see if I really like this with the purple. I'm not sure that I do. Yeah, not bad. Let's look here and see if we want our tulips on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I do. Instead of that daffodil dream, we're going to use these tulips. That is cute. There's actually some twine. Amelva Peters is the one who did this. Did I mention that already? And she had twine wrapped at the bottom and it looked really good. You are gonna wanna use your um, your alternating color, mine's Highland Heather, uh, for your sentiment. So let's figure out what sentiment we're gonna use. I'm gonna get my, my oh, what's this one? No, I don't wanna use that one, all right. Live life in full bloom. Pretty good deal. That's the one we're going to do. And we'll use that for our Highland Heather. Anyway, so there was a car crash. <laughs> and the Border Collie survived the crash, but got lost. Got thrown from the car and got lost. This was in Idaho, pretty close to where... Um, I grew up in Spokane, Washington, and um, so it must have been in, you know, call in near Coeur d'Alene or Post Falls or somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, the Border Collie got lost, and uh, they found the dog on a sheep farm not too long afterwards, though, herding sheep. <laughs> like, you know, like all good animals know, go to a nice farm and they'll take you in and take, feed you and take care of you. 
All right, now the spatter. There's this little spatter one that's kind of nice. We're gonna use that. That way I can bring in my other color. I just wanted to bring in a little bit more of my color, you know, that's the 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 under color. The, the predominant color is this saffron, of course, and then our uh, smoky slate, it's, or, or excuse me, Sahara sand is just a, just your neutral. And so we've got two colors basically going here. Um, Highland Heather and So Saffron, because this one's just a neutral. Uh, but I, I need more of that purple. I think if I were to do this again, I would put a purple border underneath this inner piece just to get that, a little, little edge of purple there. So we'll just put a little spatter. So I'm not sure that I really even want any spatter on here, but I'm doing it anyway. All right, we're gonna do it like that and like that, just to give a little, little spatter on it. That way we get a little bit of color, but it's not that big a deal. All right, and then of course there was the dog that was, um, a man had a stroke. And this was like in New Jersey. I had a stroke and his dog recognized that he was having trouble and managed to get him, he licked him or something to get him alert. And then he was able to even drag. The dog pulled him closer to where his cell phone was and he could reach up there and grab it. Now you're gonna wanna put this on the side. So you're gonna just kinda wanna see how's this gonna work. We're gonna put that there. Now I would want to put little little stems, I think, going down from there. But since I don't want to add any green to it, I would do it with smoky slate. And instead of that, maybe we will just put that twine on the bottom. What do you think? I think a little twine will would be good. I think it might. There was um, a guy in Michigan, and this was in 2017. Now, how did I find out these stories? I just went on the internet and put dog rescue stories. And there were all these things that came up. And when I was looking at all of these stories, I thought these are the kind of stories I would rather see in the news than all the stories that I see. These are the stories I want to hear about. They're good stories. And uh, But in 2017, a guy slipped and fell on the ice in Mich Michigan and actually broke his neck. He couldn't move, and his dog um, lay on top of him for 19, was it 19 hours? I think so, 19 hours, laid on top, barking the whole time until people finally figured out that there was a problem over there and came and investigated and helped him. And so he was helped, he was saved. I'm, paralyzed from falling on the ice. Wow, so be careful out there. All right, we're gonna put dimensionals just on this one side to um, let's try to get it uncovered as I do it. I always struggle with getting them uncovered on these videos. Now, I, oh, I didn't want to uncover it, did I? Because if I'm going to put twine on it, I'm going to need to put that twine on before we lay that on there. So let's grab some twine. Now, I could do twine because I do have some, but, no, there it is. I do have some right there. Pretty easy to grab. Oh, that's a ribbon. <sighs> no. This is the problem when you have all of your supplies kind of crammed together. I need a pretty good long piece and it's going to go three times. Okay, so we'll wrap this around. Right there. One, two, three. There we go. And then we'll tie that after I get it on. I'm going to put it like this. So I can see exactly that I'm getting my, all of my dimensionals on there. There we go. Okay, now we can tie our ribbon on the side. 
since it's twine, it's pretty easy. You can just do a quick little bow. And then if you wanted more of a bow, you wanted to do a double bow or something, you could just do it with your extra pieces here and then just put a glue dot on there. There we go. All right. And then we can put our little tulips right on top of that. Very cute. I love it. So I found, discovered it's a Canadian thing. It's a pur Purina, Ralston Purina, you know, the ones that do the, um, let's go snip along that tulip right there. There we go. And it's a Canadian version. Ralston Purina is no longer, um, Ralston Purina, apparently Nestle, Bought it out, and I was curious as I was looking. Uh, there's a Purina Animal Hall of Fame. <laughs> Can you believe it? Which was nice because they have all these stories. Like you can just you just click on the year, and then in that year there are all these animals that did heroic things like this. And um, 2021 has like a whole gob of little animal rescued, you know, rescued human type stories that are very entertaining. They're happy news. We're gonna put this bike under. I don't want you right on the top. There we go, just like that. All right, very, very cute. And then the little windmill goes on there and that is spinning. You can put some white, you know, paper in here if you want to, just a little little sheet of white, trim it, and then you could write on it, but um, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. You can do that at your leisure. But we, we aren't gonna get that whole windmill on there, just this one side. So let's just put a couple of dimensionals here on the side. That's gonna be on there. So anyway, if you want to find out some really happy, happy news, let's put it over the, over those tulips, okay? You can go on the website, just type in Purina, uh, Hall of, or yeah, Purina Animal Hall of Fame. And then on the website, it get, it takes you to, it's a Canadian one. So I typed in the USA version, because these a lot of those were, um, they were from all over, but the um, Animal Hall of Fame stories tended to be Canadian stories. And those stories, as I just gave you, the ones that I found on the internet were all in the United States. So they, this stuff happens all over the United States, too. And I wanted to know if Purina is going on. Apparently, it was in St. Louis, Missouri, right here in my home state, my new home state. Um, and uh, before it sold to Nestle, but they still have offices. They even have an office here in Springfield, which I did not know about. And they um, do cat and dog litter at this place and bedding, which I thought was interesting. All right, now let's go back to this really quick. Okay, so that I can show you what I wanted to show you about the tulip fields. Now these are, um, boy, I don't have a card handy. I should have brought them out. I, I, it's been a little tricky to do these. Um, the windmill and all that, very standard, and it's very pretty and cute. So let me just stamp really quick. I'm going to just stamp out the, the um, windmill so that you can see how nice. You want to do it on a separate piece of paper. Here, let's use my scrap because... Um, get the bundle obviously you have to have the bundle to get all of these dies so you want to get the bundle and then it has a die that comes you know that cuts this 
windmill out perfectly. Isn't that cute? So you've got your windmill, you just use the die and cut that out, and then you can put all of your tulip fields underneath here and just stick this on here and you're pretty much good to go. You can, there's trees, there's a die for that one, but these teeny tiny trees stamp up really nice next to it. Um, there is this stamp, which is really cute. I could have used this, in fact, I should have used it right underneath those tulips and they almost would look like little, um, if you did it with green, it would look like little tulip leaves underneath there. So you're gonna really like this set. It's a, it's a great one. And remember, celebration, $50 spend, and if you buy this bundle, you're gonna have spent $50, and you get a free item. There's all kinds of really cool things, so get in there and spend, spend, spend. There's the host code, and then when you spend $50 worth of something, I will make sure you get your catalogs. Um, this tulip field is, it's a little tricky just because it is monochromatic, which is just a fancy way of saying it's all one color. And that's cool because usually in a tulip field, you know, you've got all of one color. That's one reason that when you sponge, you might want to sponge your colors a little different maybe. Now I could turn this this way and put blue up here. If I did that, then I'm gonna be a little more free about what colors I can put in my tulips here. They're not all gonna be blue or purple, which is what I'm going to do. But if I was gonna just use uh, my DSP, you know, I could use this as the sky part. But just to show you the tulips, I'm gonna sacrifice my nice morning sky and we'll start with Highland Heather since we've got it out. And we're gonna, and this, uh, that one's gonna be too light. Highland Heather's gonna be too light. You'll want us to do, um, you will want to do um, great grapefruit, or not grapefruit, um, gorgeous grape. It's gonna be dark or purple. So I'm gonna go ahead. My Highland Heather will just blend into that. Okay, now you can see I've made a mess there on that side. So let's clean that off. Okay. And, all right, what I am doing with this, first of all, I'm te testing it to see, because that's pretty dark, but not bad. I think I like that second generation a little better, but we're gonna go ahead and just go with it dark. I'll do both. I'll do that and a second generation of it. What I've been doing is I've noticed I'm getting better results. You can use a, a Stamparatus. I don't know that it'll help you all that much, just because it is a, it's a, like a, in a circle. It's not just straight across. I'm starting in the middle, wherever I'm gonna have my lighthouse, like my lighthouse will be on the side. You won't want your or windmill, you won't want your windmill in the very center. You're gonna want it on this side a little bit or this side or, or far on this side or far on that side. Just don't put it right in the middle. But wherever your middle part is gonna be, that's where I'm beginning. So I'm gonna start there. And mine hasn't been stamping perfectly. It did this time. But I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. You do want to leave a little bit of a row in between. You don't wanna be right on top. You can be, now the problem is that I didn't stamp all of that there. <laughs> so that's gonna be darker right there. I don't want it to be. All right, so. I'm gonna leave what I hope is a little row. There we go. So that's a little bit big of a gap, but it's it's passable. I'm gonna live with that. And then we're gonna go with a whole different color. And you can do, I would, uh, you know, experiment and see what you like. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm finding that our colors, I don't know. I'm not really happy with how some of these, um, oh, I don't need, I'm not putting that away, I'm putting the color away. I'm not happy with how our 
Our pinks and purples are fine. It's the it's the oranges. I'm not coming up with a good combination for our our orange. It's um it's this color. I'm not really coming up with that with that color with my ink pads. So I don't know if it's just my ink pads or what, but. All right, so there's Magenta Madness. And again, we're gonna leave a little bit of a gap. And it doesn't have to be perfect, thankfully. Okay, it does not have to be perfect. But you do wanna get it. Get it close, but just not right on. Now, if you do get it right on it, it's okay. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna try, hmm, see that? That's looking pretty dark there, isn't it? I need something. This rich razzleberry is what I need. But rich razzleberry straight out is pretty dark. And I need to stamp it even. Okay, so let's try it here. We might only do one rich razzleberry. Let's see how that looks. Aha, not bad. All right, so now we're ready for just two, two more. I want these two to be the same color. These doesn't gonna matter so much, but um, I'm finding that you want the same color on top. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna take a chance and do Flirty Flamingo. I don't think I'm going to like it, <laughs> but we're gonna try it anyway. Okay. I haven't liked it so far. Let's test it here. Yeah, see, it's it's just not, it's okay, but I think I would prefer to have a combination of Flirty Flamingo and Polished Pink, so you could probably mix that color up if you wanted to. Let's do that one, we'll stamp it again to make sure that that color matches. I have one more step to show you here with this, and then I promise we will be done and we will move on. Um, you can see it kind of goes up, and it's okay. You're gonna be able to fix that horizon because you've got your um, animal, your, um, your windmill and the trees and other things that you can do to fix your horizon with. All right, so let's see, do I have, I did, okay, if you were going to use this, of course, I'm not going to, but if you were going to, you would want to set it in your field here, and see, that kind of disguises that a little bit. All right, now what I did, just to give a little bit more of a realistic look of the flowering fields, um, because I don't really like those gaps but I didn't really like it without those gaps either so what I just found working good for me is to take some brown and these are our Stampin Up pencils there's garden green and this is early espresso and um, whatever green you're going to use and some brown we're going to just put in our dirt and our leaves if you go on pictures of tulip fields, this is what you see, is there's actually, <laughs> you know, these are rows, and um, I just thought it looked a little better this way, so put in a little bit of green, not a lot, because I didn't really want to add like a whole lot of green color to it, but to me, it just, Add it a little bit. You can do it in here. This is just 
just adding some green in there and I'm not obviously I'm not trying to be careful I'm not trying to color in leaves of any kind um, I'm just adding in some green here because there would be green in this tulip field if you're looking at this you're gonna see some green because there's a lot of leaves in there and then you can add little bit of brown here and there if you want to. Now if you don't want any brown, that's fine. Take some of your colors that's coordinating and then you can color in your field a little bit too. Just to cover up some of my yellow that's down there and um, and it just is gonna give these flowers a little bit more depth. It's not gonna look quite so stark. Um, I just felt like it was, I like the effect. It's it's really pretty, but I personally wanted a little bit more. And you can mix up your colors a little bit more this way too. Now if you didn't want this just to be a solid, you know, one kind of tulip, because a lot of our tulips are slightly variegated. So you get, you get some various colors and you can actually add in you know, some other color if you want to. And it gives you a little bit more variety in that. Now, after you have done that, where is my tissue? Where are you, tissue? Where are you? I just put some things away, so maybe I put it in my desk drawer. No, of course not. <laughs> of course I didn't put it in my obvious desk drawer. Okay, I can't find my, oh, there it is. I did find it, All right, so I'm just taking a little tissue, and then with these pencils, you can, um, it's almost like the pastels. You can rub it, and you can get them to blend in a little bit. And if you add in just any tiny bit of moisture, Okay, if you add any moisture, it also is going to help it blend in a little bit better. And that's what I would do. All right, so that is that. And then you can take your um, lighthouse. And I do have a die for this. But for the sake of just showing you what's what, we're going to do this really quick without the die. You can do it this way, it's just sloppier. It doesn't look as good. So you have to be a lot more careful than I am being. I just want to show you what this looks like with the little lighthouse. And you can color, I would color my, this lighthouse I've been using my pencils to color in. The um, Stampin' Up! is going to offer some a whole set of new pins that are um, basic shades of ivory um, all the way to dark brown. And those are gonna be really nice to use for things like this. So here you go. You would just stick that on there and then it kind of conceals that the hill, you know, it's on a hill. It doesn't really matter. It can look like it's on a hill. Um, your little trees, let me just show you this one little tree. It's so cute. Oh, here's the one I should have used at the top. <sighs> I forgot it had this one. This one you can get on the top, and then it's nice and straight, and it's the same color. So there you go. I didn't see it, and I forgot I even had it in there. These are these little tiny trees. They're cute. Let's grab, let's grab, this is my favorite green, soft succulent just so you can see how cute these little trees look. Aren't they sweet? Put this right there. And then you can color those in either with your pencils or your, your blending pens, either one. And then there you go, is that cute? All right, so that is how you can do your fields.
Um, I hope that you enjoyed watching that and learned something. Maybe you learned how not to do it. <laughs> um, it. You know, it doesn't really matter how many times you do this. You learn how sometimes not to do things watching me and maybe someone else. I don't know. When I watch other people do things, I always learn things, how, how to do it. They're good. Sometimes it's a matter of just learning, like for instance, this one, it would have been helpful if I'd seen it. I always have it kind of sticking out and I can even just stick it right on here. But my, they're not, once I've used them um, a bunch, they don't stick down as well to my case as they do to my plastic. So that's one reason I, I haven't been always sticking them to my case because I tend to, they, they slide around and, oops, I need that tree, and fall out. All right, so thank you very much again for watching. I appreciate this is not my regular time, so check in again with me. Now, next Monday, I should be here. Next Monday, I'm going to try to do one other video also. Maybe not this week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to do another one this week. It's possible. This week? Oh, tomorrow's already Friday. There's no way I'm going to do one this week. I am going to try to do two this next week, though, because... We are going to be out of town for um, two whole weeks. We are taking a little vacation. Um, all, all, the, all of our kids that we couldn't see during Christmas time, um, we're all gonna get together and enjoy a nice long two, for us, a nice long two week holiday seeing all of our kids and our grandkids. It's gonna be really fun. So I will miss seeing, hey, Jewel, I'm sorry I missed seeing you. Glad that you're there. <laughs> How are you? Hope you're feeling better. Ah, our snow is really coming down now. I mean, it's nothing. Okay, you can, I don't know if you can see out there, but um, it's really not doing much, but it's definitely more than it was, and it was supposed to be stopped by now, so I'm sorry to see that there is snow. But anyway, today's the last day. Hopefully tomorrow is supposed to melt. That'd be great. And if not tomorrow, uh, Saturday, it's supposed to melt. So we should be all set to go. By the time, it's, uh, hopefully, uh, by the time we go on vacation, um, I'm hoping the roads will be good because our airport's quite, you know, it's a 20 minute drive. So I'd like it to be a nice 20 minutes instead of me with my eyes closed, clutching the side of the seat as Jeff takes us <laughs> takes us along <laughs> that's my riding style I'm a terrible driver so I wouldn't drive myself but I'm terrified so anyway so next week I will be here Monday I am hoping to do another video maybe on Wednesday and uh and then um Right, because we have a team meeting. Those of us on our team, we have a team meeting on Tuesday. So ladies, I will see you there. That's gonna be fun. And uh, I'll really enjoy that. This is a great time to join us, actually. Celebration, you um, are gonna, if you join right now, join our team. You get two bundles, two free bundles. And our team, you know, has all kinds of fun and you would really enjoy it. And then you also get all of your discounts all year long. And you get to buy stuff ahead of time so it's not all sold out by the time you try to buy it. So there's a whole lot of reasons why you want to join us and we would love to have you. All right. Thanks a lot. And I will see you next week. Bye.